Welcome to the Bodybuilding Banter Podcast, your number one source of all things bodybuilding. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date on future episodes. Now, here's your host, Leroy Rollins. All right, man. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the Bodybuilding Banter Podcast. For everybody that's listening or watching this on YouTube, welcome to the podcast. John Mitchell is here and he's going to talk to us all about bodybuilding, what he's been doing, what he's up to and what he wants to do. So introduce yourself, man. Tell the people what you're all about and we will go from there. Sweet. All right. So um, yeah, my name is John Mitchell. I'm owner of Train with Mitchell, um, my own personal training company. It's mainly online coaching now. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a natural bodybuilder. I've been lifting since I was like 15. So I've been lifting for a long time. Man. How old are you now? Um, 26. Okay. I so remember that. Someone asked me that yesterday and I actually <laughs> forgot. <laughs> <laughs> that's when um, you know, eh? That's when you're like, shit, I'm getting up there. I, I know, that's it. I, I really stopped and was like, man, I'm, I'm actually, I'm nearly 30. <laughs> <laughs> you're closer to 30 than 20. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm, once you get past 25, you're there. But um, yeah. yeah, no, so but I'd say I've, I've been bodybuilding seriously now since probably 2015. Okay. Um, I have competed before that. Uh, but I, that's not really, I don't really take that as serious. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, sure. I wasn't that into it then. So pretty much, yeah, from 2015, um, I've been bodybuilding. I competed last year. Yep. I've just come off um, the back of this season, this year as well. Nice. Um, and now I'm going into a big growth season because i got to get bigger. Nice. <laughs> nice. Haven't we all, but i got to yeah. get bigger. Sweet. All right, man. Let's, uh, okay, let's go back then. Let's go to that first show. Uh, you said before 2015. So when are we talking? 2000 and I think that was 2013. Okay. I was young, man. I was, I was, the thing is, I was working, I was at university. Okay. And I was working at a really cool gym. Um, and like, you know, not like everyone my age was, and that was at uni, was out partying and stuff where I spent loads of time in the gym. That was more my thing. Right. Um, and I was, I was, well, I thought I was lean, but when I look back now with like educated eyes, I'm like, no, no, no. I just had newbie games. You know, we could just right. do anything and stay shredded. Like, yeah. That's how I was. So, um, yeah, I, I got myself ready um, with the help of one of my friends. He'd done a men's physique uh, class. Sure. Um, and I'd done the junior bodybuilding. Okay. Um, it was an untested federation. I didn't know anything about the federation. Yeah. And I remember being backstage and like, I, I'm like seeing some guy queued up. I massive. <laughs> You're like... And then my friend was like, well, don't worry, he's, he's, he's obviously an adult, don't worry. And then um, they called the juniors backstage and I walked and there he was. I was like, Whoa. how? how like so yeah um but i mean it was, it was good fun you know obviously yep. at the time it was you know social media wasn't as popular as it is now for sure so instagram was it was it was almost frowned upon you know when it was, yeah when instagram first started doing video yeah yeah it was uh and it was, was like, an, it was an interesting transition eh? like you know not a lot of people were like you know i'm i'm 24 right so we're kind of in that same age gap like facebook started yeah. to dwindle yeah. And then Instagram was coming in, but you're right. It wasn't like it was so acceptable at first. Like if you posted a shirtless pic, everybody's like, who's this guy think he is right now? That's all you see. Yeah, literally. And there was, I never forget because it was when Vine was hot as well. And yeah. Was Vine was huge. Vine. Yeah. Vine was sick. And then, um, and someone was like, Oh, um, now we're going to see countless gym videos, uh, on Instagram. And I was yeah. like, that's a good idea. I yeah. can do that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, so I you know I, I did that and it was cool because quite a lot of people from like uni and stuff obviously followed my Instagram and saw what I'd done. Yep. And at the time it was like, oh, you done so well, you look so good. But I look back now and I'm like, yeah. nah, you really didn't have a clue. Yeah, for sure. So what did you place in that in that comp? Un unplaced. Okay. To, to be honest, like it's not the greatest federation anyway. Sure. Um, and it was really badly organized on the day. Mm. Um, but funnily enough, some of the guys that are on stage with me are guys that are really popular and that like they've done really well for themselves. Right. Like I don't know if you've ever heard of um, Owen Powell. No. He's on uh, he's on Instagram as Owen Powell Old School. The guy is he's got an incredible physique. Like yeah. just he's insane. But I remember, yeah, being on stage with him as a oh, junior. Wow. But even like the level then, I was like here and he was yeah. right here. Yeah. yeah. Um so yeah, so that was so I didn't even place in that. I got my little medal. Yeah. Um, but then I did compete then uh, the following year. Okay. So um, one of my friends said to me about um, natural federations. He was like, you know, there are natural federations. I'm a world champion in natural federation as a junior. Right. My friend Chris Roach. And I was like, all right, well, let's have a look at this then. Sure. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, so then I went as a junior to a show in 2014. Okay. Um, much harder, like, diet-wise. Okay. Um, 
but I was still, yeah, I was still getting away with, you know, like a low carb day to me was still, I was still trying to push as many carbs as I could. Right. You know, at the time. And I remember there was one day I put a picture up and I had some chicken and peppers and my friend was like, you finally learned what low carb is. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I went to that show. I didn't, I didn't, again, didn't place in that show. Okay. Um, but it's funny, I put up a picture, I put, I put up this morning actually a comparison of me from that show to now. Um, and also you can see like my shape and everything, but yeah, condition just, just yeah. wasn't there. Right. Um, and then I was just like, you know what? I don't really think this is for me. <laughs> I, was okay. like, I was like, I don't, I don't think I'm made for this competing life. Right. Um, I was graduating as well. So I think, yep. I think I graduated just before the show. Okay. Um, and then after, yeah, I was just like, I've got, I've got no interest in it basically. Gotcha. So, yeah. So then after 2014, then what? So then, um, one of my friends was talking to this coach from Australia okay. um, and he wanted to take on an international client and he, you know, he got to know, obviously he'd been put in contact with me yep. and he asked me if I wanted to do it. And I was, I was like, at the time I was studying to become a personal trainer. So like everything was fitness. Yeah. Um, Cause I finished uni. I've got a degree in uh, music management and studio oh, nice. production. Cool. Um, but I didn't want to go into the music industry and I was <laughs> like, right, well, I'm going to become a PT. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and that was, so he took me on and we've done a prep from January to June. Of uh, which year? Um, uh, that was 2015. So this is the 2015 show. Okay. Um, a, a proper prep, you know, progress and checking pictures each week, yep. a proper diet. Um, it, it was like serious. Like I got a taste of what bodybuilding was yeah, like. Yeah, you were in it now. Yeah. But I couldn't quite like, I didn't quite, I don't know, in my head I was just a bit, I was still, I was still like. I look back now and I'm like, you weren't that serious though. Like right. I still, it wasn't a full taster, but it was more than what I'd had. Okay. Um, so we went to that show and I come second in the novices. Okay. Qualified for the British finals, um, yep. which was really cool, which was our, our, our goal. Yeah. Um, I competed with a good friend of mine, James Patterson. Um, yep. He won. He ended up winning the overall as well. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, we come out of that and then three weeks later I had another show and I didn't place in that one. Okay. And that's when the sour taste came in my mouth because oh. I was like, I felt like I was better. Yeah. Um, and I just, like, I looked at the guy that come fifth. I remember he was really tall, really, he just looked like a string bean because he was really lean. Yeah. He was really tall. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I, I was fuming. I was just like in the car on the way back, like, how is this guy placed higher than me? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, and then it was it was just a case of, you know, that really did annoy me. It, re it really got to me. Yeah. Um, and then I was just like, right, obviously, because I was a PT, I was trying to build my business and stuff. Yep. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do the British finals. And okay. to be honest, it was because, like I say, I wasn't quite ready for what yeah. prep is. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because it's, yeah, you, you have to, you got to respect it. And it's not like I didn't respect it. It was just literally, I didn't quite know what to expect. Yeah, like you uh, can't, you can't, uh, you know, it's funny. Right now, like, there's a lot of people, like I'm in a, I'm in a small town over here in Canada and and uh, between myself and like one or two other people that take it seriously, there's a lot of people that are like thinking about competing and talking about it and posting about it on Instagram. And it's like, <laughs> if you're doing it for the likes, you're you're gonna not you're gonna not enjoy it, and you, and you yeah. can't take it lightly. You really can't because it's no. it's a like if you work full time, it's another full time job. Yep. And I think the thing with me is like what I noticed, especially in the last couple of years, where I built my own business, I built it around bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, so like my girlfriend, she um, I, like we live together now, but she lives two hours away from where I'm from. Right. So I would go and see her every weekend. So I'd only have clients Monday to Friday. I wouldn't work weekends, so I could see her at the weekend. Sure. You know, then I would have clients in the morning, but but like I'd do my cardio first, then I'd have some clients, then I would train. That that's literally my life right now. That's exactly what I do. <laughs> Clients from like 6 a.m. to like 10, you're right, do the cardio yep. beforehand, eat. Clients 6 a.m. to 10 probably have a little like 15 minutes in there, eat again. Then like 10, 10, 30, 11, train, chill, and then clients in the afternoon. That That's my yeah. Monday to Friday. Yeah, that that, that honestly, I've, I've, I lived that life. And it's, yep. and it's good, but it, it kind of takes away the fun of it, man. Like, I, like honestly, like I just feel like, because everything is, is fitness. You can't ever yeah. shut off from work. No, you're in the gym 24-7. That's it. Like, and the worst thing, the, the the best and worst thing is training in the gym that you work at. I, that literally, out. I was, I was literally just about to say that. Like, I find sometimes, uh, you know, it's like I'll finish up with a client, and instead of like, 
you know, driving to the gym and getting some music going, you're sipping your pre, you're getting hyped like you did when yeah. you were like 16, 17. Now it's like <laughs> they walk out the door and I turn around and I'm like, well, I'm at the gym. And sometimes, yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's like, sometimes like what I'll do is I'll have like, not softer music playing, but like different music in the background. And then when it's time for me yeah. to train, like I'll crank something up just to like change the atmosphere a little bit. But no, I totally yep. agree. Sometimes it's, you're like, well, yeah, we got work to do, I guess. I'm back here again. If, <laughs> yeah. if, you're, if you're in your session and someone comes up to you and asks you something, you, you can't you can't be a dick and be like, go away, leave me alone. Yeah. At the same time, you're like, come on, man, this is my time. Yeah, like, this is my hour. Leave me alone. Me so, but yeah, no, so that's uh, that's one thing I did find. For, but one thing that was good, I started going to, um, when I, I'll come into it, when obviously I started um, under my, my new coach, yep. um, I started going to his gym, you know, and some mornings it would take us like 45 minutes to get there, but sure. at least it got me away. Yeah. And like you said, I'd have the playlist on the way up there. Yeah. I didn't just have to use my headphones because I'd get into his gym and he's always got music pumping. Yeah, perfect. Um, but then it's like literally there, yeah, then you drive back and it's like, right, okay, oh, I'm back here now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, so we're 2015 now. You skipped the yep. British finals. Now what? Um, now I'm focused fully on building my business, um, okay. trying to get as many clients as I can because I was I was doing. It was like I had a really good month. I was like, I can't believe how much money I'm making. I'm doing really well. You know, I'm getting loads of clients. Yep. And then the next month comes, and this person can't afford PT this month. This person doesn't want to carry on, and you're like, hang yep. on a minute, and it's just sink. Okay. You know, and then the next month then picks right up and you're like, yeah, this is cool. And then it sinks. And I'm like, yeah. I, I can't do This is giving me some anxiety issues. So you're self-employed right then? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So self-employed. So I started off working for uh, a gym for three months during the two, uh, 2015 prep, actually. I was there. Okay. Um, where you work a certain amount of hours on the gym floor and then you build up your PT hours. Yeah. But I was commuting to that job an hour a day and it just, I was doing too many PT hours and I couldn't, they couldn't accommodate for cutting the hours down for me. So it's, oh, wow. it, it's it got too much, man, yep. like too quick. Sure. Um, so then I went to another gym where you work under there, you can use your own brand, but you work out, it's Anytime Fitness. Okay. So I worked there, but you are, it's on a self employed basis. So I was paying my rent each month. Yep. Um, then, of course, obviously, when you're working out, because I didn't do PT to make, obviously I knew I'd make good money, but I didn't do it to make money. I did it because I wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a job I really wanted to do, but then, you know, you start thinking, right, okay, I need at least two clients because I need to pay my rent. Yep. I need another client because I need to pay my bills. Yep. And then you're thinking of the money before you're thinking of the yeah. enjoyment side of it. For sure. Um, so, yeah, so then in, uh, and then in 2015, funnily enough, um, I, I met my missus. I met nice. a girlfriend and um, started spending a lot more time with her. Um, you know, when I met her, I was like, yeah, you know, I've competed this year. Um, I said I competed again. I didn't get the result I wanted. I'm, I'm not really into it. I don't really want to do it again. And yep. that was my attitude on it. Gotcha. So, and then, yeah, man, just literally just kind of became a normal person, you know, like <laughs> doing things with her at the weekend. But pretty much my life was work Monday to Friday, see see my lady at the weekend because it was the only time we got. Yeah, yeah. So you maximize um, it. Yeah. So, and that, that was, yeah, pretty much, to be honest, that was pretty much, what are we, 20? Is it 2018? <laughs> not yes, much longer, but still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pretty much 2016, it was just, um, I know I got big, I got big in, in 2016 because, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I never fall off the wagon. Like this is, like training and fitness is ingrained in me. I yeah. just, I can't help it. It's part of me. But, yeah, exactly. You know, I was, I was eating a lot more. Yeah. You know, we were going, obviously we're a new couple, so we were going out. Yeah, like, exactly. We the weekend. We'd go, I remember there was a time we went out for dinner Friday, breakfast Saturday, and then dinner on Saturday night. There you go. Couple so, extra oh, thousand yeah. calories right there. Yeah, yeah. You know when people always say, "Oh, I'm on five thousand calories." It's like, no, I think I probably actually was somewhere near there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and just had basically a year off. I mean, for the first part of the year, I was only training five days a week. Where yep. usually I went from seven to six and having one day off. Right. Um, and then obviously when I met her, I was like, right, well, I don't want to train at the weekends. I want to spend time with you. Yeah, she's so doing Friday. I was only Friday. doing five days a week training as well. Perfect. Um, which was cool. And then, yeah, I think I, I, my heaviest I got to was about 101 kilos. And I'm only, I'm five foot eight and a half, so I'm not, I'm not very tall. Oh, you were thick. <laughs> yeah, man, I was thick. <laughs> I was, I was real thick. But it was, it was, it was good because I was just enjoying myself. I wasn't thinking about bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, but I did always used to joke about um, my, my coach, uh, Gavin Gibson. He's a WNBF pro. Okay. He's, he's insane. He, if you search him on Instagram, he's, the man, like he's a don. Um, but I'd always run jokes with my friends and say to him, like, when I'm 30, I'm going to get Gav to prep me to turn me pro. And, uh, you know, I was going up to his gym for some training sessions and I'd always leave his gym, like, 
I can take on the world. Yeah, you just like, am. I could do it. Um, but at the time, I was just looking at a really thick me, thinking, you've got a long way to go yet, mate. Yeah, <laughs> you've got sure. a big cut ahead of you. Nice. So, yeah, and we pretty much just cracked on through that, through the whole of 2016. Okay. And then the beginning of the 2017, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm, I don't want to be this weight no more. Okay. Um, I feel too heavy. In, I think it was October, I was, because um, the gym I was PTing out of does strongman and stuff as well. Oh, cool. So if ever the guys, um, you know, were doing like challenges and stuff, I'd get involved because yeah. there was there was a bit of a divide in the gym. There was like the bodybuilders and the strong men. Yeah. Um, and they don't talk. Uh, yeah, yeah and it's funny because like it, it was such a divide, but I, I was oblivious to it because I got on with everyone. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't realize that there was actually this like this banter between them. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this wow, underlying man. heat. Yeah, like yeah, literally. So, um, but I done them. Um, they were doing um like a strongman leaderboard where you get to do a challenge and just running something in the gym. Yep. And I was doing a duck walk, 100 kilo duck walk outside and I rolled my ankle. Oh shit. And yeah, man, the, I think I tore ligaments. It was awful. Like right. my foot was messed up. And I remember that happened. Yeah. I think that was like, um, November time. Okay. And I remember thinking, I hope this doesn't take me out of the gym for long because I can't go without training, especially yeah. while I'm this heavy. For sure. Um, so yeah, so I started to rehab that. I still trained around it, upper body got yeah. trained and stuff. Yep. Um, and then January, the foot was all right, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna go on a serious cut now. Okay. Um, and I've done it to help a couple of my clients because they were like, look, we want to go on an intense cut. I said, all right, I'll do it along with you then. Cool. That's cool. So and then, yeah, that's where it started in in 2017. Nice, nice. So then 2018, just off season. Uh, well, so um, sorry, going on from 2017. So then I've done 10 weeks for myself. Yep. Well, I lost 10 kilos. It was a, a harsh cut. Yeah, that's um, tough. And then, like, I, I just kept myself sort of in, in good condition. Okay. And then I had a few events, and then I was like, you know what? There's, I know there's shows coming up this year, so maybe I'll prep myself and just let me just see if, yeah. if it's something I can do. Yeah, dabble in um, it a bit. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me see if if, if I do want to do it, and then because you know what it's like with this with, with this game, if you do take it that serious, you need something at the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need that goal for sure. Because, like, even if it's just once a year, like, you can't be getting massive and getting lean for no reason. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not getting lean just to pose on the beach because I'll ruin it three days after eating. Yeah, exactly. Day. Yeah, it's not um, enjoyable. Yeah, exactly. But, um, but yeah, so I got myself ready. And then, um, and then I, I went to, to Gab's gym and I just, I said to him one day, it was, it was in July, it was just after my birthday. And I said to him, can you have a look at me and see what you think? Yep. Um, you know, because there's a show coming up in, and I think it was, it was seven weeks time. Okay. And he goes, and he goes, yeah, right. And he got me to strip off in the middle of the gym. And never forget, and he come over and he pinched my stomach. He's like, we can get you shredded in seven weeks. And I was <laughs> like, I don't know how I feel about this. I feel like humiliated, but excited at the same yeah, time. Yeah, it's a mixed feeling. Um, yeah, so he, but he took me under his wing. And um, yeah, then we got us, got ourselves prepped. And I mean, that was proper prep. Like, okay. Because I, I, obviously what I'd done through 2016, 2017, I've learned more about posing. I'd actually learned more about competing yeah yeah you know, and, the and science behind it people yeah and, and it was literally like i could but even so you can read all you want you can watch all the podcasts speak to all the people about it but until you've done it no yeah you can't apprehend what it's what it's gonna be no and yeah you can't you can't explain it to people like it's like you know at my gym where i work like i have a we have like a whiteboard and i marked it down 28 weeks and yeah. i write down my weight how much cardio I'm doing, my calories, and then like any changes week to week to week. And, yeah. uh, you know, people are seeing it and they're like, okay, like you dropped some calories, blah, blah. And like, they're like, wow, you're down like 10 pounds already. I'm like, yep. I'm like, it's just, you're chipping away at it. Right. And I'm yep. like, and by the beginning of the chart, it says 176 pounds. And I said at the bottom of that chart, it's going to say 150. And they're like, how are you going to lose 26 pounds? I'm like, you watch. <laughs> I, I'm laying it out for you right here from start to finish. You're going to see exactly how it's done. But it's yeah, you can't, it's hard to explain to people that haven't been through it, right? Yeah, that's it, and and, and even even like the transition between shows because I done we well, done the first show, um, which was so I compete with the UK the FBA, which is the Drug Free Bodybuilding Association. Yep. Um, that's the if you compete with them, that's the the channel to go into WNBF and win a WNBF Pro card. Yep. Um, so yeah, so I compete. We done the Heart of England, and I come second at okay. that one. And that was in the heavyweights, but so as I said, I'm sure I'm a little guy, like, but I'm a, I'm a heavy guy though. Like I'm, I can get to 100 kilos easy. Like yeah. now, 
I, I can get there easy. I mean, it's not going to be pretty, but I can get there. You can get there, yeah. Um, and I can hold it better than most people would. But um, but I was the youngest. I was the smallest. Um, and I was just I was just like the little pup up there. Yeah. Um, and uh, and it was funny because I again I didn't even think of it like that. And then when um, Gav shared one of my posts, you know, he said, you know, well done. Um, congratulations to my client, blah, blah, blah. He's like, not bad for a little guy. And then I was like, am I a little guy? <laughs> and then I looked at the pictures. I was like, jeez, yeah, man. I'm like, wow, I'm so real. And it kind of, maybe, like, short man syndrome kicked in. And I was like, yeah, but I stood my own against him. Yeah, so but I, I killed really it. Proud, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, that's right. You're like, leave me alone. Yeah, but the guy that won, uh, Daniel Mooker, he actually went on to win the British and the, he won his pro card that year. Ah, He's there you go. An animal, man. He's a beast. That's sweet, um, though. But yes, yeah, so we've done that show and, and leading up to that show, it's funny because Gav was like, oh, it's, it's a shame that you're only doing the one show. And I was like, well, I'll do more if you want. Yeah. He goes, well, if there are more. So then we went to another federation called the Natural Physique Association, so the sure. NPA. Yep. Um, and I actually met um, uh, Dean from one of your other podcasts. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met, I met Dean at that show. Um, it was funny. It was me, him, uh, this other guy, Adam. We were all getting our tan done in the hotel room at the same time. So we just stood there with our socks on, like, yeah. So, boys, <laughs> <laughs> you are uh, um, you ready for this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I went to I went there and I went as a heavyweight again. But the heavyweight cut off in the UK, the FBA is eighty kilos. Okay. Um, but in the MPA, it's seventy eight. Okay. So even though my weight was coming down, because I think at the UK the FBA I was like eighty one. So right. I'm like right on the cusp. Yep. Um, we thought there's no way I'm pulling right down to 78 for the NPA, so I stayed as a heavyweight. Gotcha. Um, ended up winning the heavyweights. Um, I won the best poser and I won the overall at that show. Wow. And qualified to the British finals. That was that was one of my favourite shows ever because it was literally like we just came in and we cleaned house. Like, nice. It was, it was amazing, man. And as well, um, through this whole prep, my, my auntie had been diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. Oh, man. So that show was kind of like dedicated to her because it was in the Southwest, which is where she lives. Sure. So, um, and the guys that made my trunks, uh, Iron Monkey, they, they put my, my family name Fox in the back there and st- like in the back of the trunks. And it was just, it was a perfect day. That's like, cool, man. That's super cool. I couldn't have imagined it. And it, like, I walked in because the trophy is massive. It's this Conan statue. Yeah. I remember walking in, looking at it, thinking I would love to walk home with that trophy. Yeah. But trying to get it out of my head because I'm always like, yeah, but you don't know who's going to turn up and oh, yeah. you are little, you might not be able to stand your own. And, yeah. But yeah, coming home that night was just, oh, it's amazing, man. It was cool. So, um, and that so, was, yeah, so, so that was the this, NPA show that you dedicated to her? Yeah, that was the NPA show, yeah. That's and, awesome, um, man. And I got, when, I, when we got home, when I got the photos and stuff sent, because um, the cool thing is, yeah, obviously you have to wait for your photos, but yeah. because I won, I was on the winner's um, podium, so I had my photos the next day. Sweet. Um, so I got them on a postcard and I sent them to her and stuff. And she man, like, your grandma must have pumped. She, oh man, she was so, she was like, I can't believe it. And she goes, you don't use any of these steroids, do you? I was like, no, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. that's the classic. That's the <laughs> classic. You don't take protein, do you? <laughs> <laughs> but it made me laugh because she said to me, she was like, um, she goes, because obviously she was ill. She made a joke out of it. She's like, you know, I'm on all these bloody steroids and they don't do anything for you. So yeah. don't ever touch them. Yeah, I was like, don't no, worry, go. I'm not, I'm not good at that's um, awesome. But yeah, it was that, that was a cool show, man. And then we had the British finals for... So I was, I was through to both British finals with both federations. Yep. So I'd done the UK, the FBA one, um, but I dropped down to middleweights. Okay. So, so because it was like, you know, being on that cusp, and obviously, like like you all know, um, again, things that people don't realise is that I dropped like a kilo between each show. Yeah. You know, like ate some food after, had a nice big full week of training, like feeling good from that little little post comp eats. Yeah. And then literally my weight would just come down and it was like, wow, okay, I'm gonna make middles. Yeah. Um and that was stressful, man. That was stressful because it, I, I I just I overthink things all the time. I remember that night, if I wouldn't have had my glass of wine, I wouldn't have slept. Right. Like, that is literally the only thing that knocked me out was the wine because I was just thinking, I hope I make weight, I hope I make weight. And then I'm like, well, Gav ain't gonna like prep you wrong, is he? So because it'll make him look like an idiot and you an idiot. So relax. Yeah, just chill. Yeah, and then I'm like, yeah, I know, but still, <laughs> bang, there goes the wine. I was out cold, um, nice. and I weighed in uh, seventy nine point, actually seventy nine point five on the day. He squeaked it, eh? So yeah, ju- literally just in there, um, and it was wicked. So then, but what I didn't realise is there was another guy, uh, Tom Hicks. He had done the same, but he'd come down further. Right. Um, and like he was really dehydrated on stage and stuff, but he ended up winning the British title, and I come second to him. Nice. So, but it was wicked, man. It was really cool. And then I was due to do the NPA finals a week later. Right. 
but they had some issues with the venue, so theirs got put back a couple of weeks. And then with all the stuff with my auntie, there was, there was a big drama about like who's going to go and get her dog and, and all of sure. this stuff. I was just like, you know what? I'm going to just cut it there and not do the NPA finals. Yeah. I'm happy with what we've done. I mean, we had, we've done three shows. I had five trophies to show for it. There you go. So I was like, that's like a Cinderella story. So. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, man. But then I wasn't quite ready for the after show periods. You know, the 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 no libido. Yeah. Uh, trying to transition and I I put on like a like I said, I can put on weight fast. I piled up fast, man. And then I yeah. went to um I went to Germany to see my best friend. Sure. I don't know if you've ever been to Germany, but their food is just <laughs> carbs and salt. That's it. Right. Carbs, salt and meat, that is it. That's it, eh? Um, and I ended up like rebounding right back up. I think my heaviest I got to was like hundred and three. Wow. Like it was just You got puppy. Pardon? <laughs> You got puffy. <laughs> Proper puffy, man. It's, it's funny because, like, this year, obviously, I've controlled myself much better. Yeah. And, I, and I've compared the two photos because I'm feeling a bit like, you know, you feel chunky now. Yeah. And I look at that and I'm like, I was a cloud. <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember it was after my last one, like, total, like, no protocol after the show of, like, what to do intelligently. And I was, like, 20 pounds in, like, a week. Like, it was disgusting. <laughs> it was awful. And, like... The puffy cloud, like that's exactly how I felt. Like I was like just round, <laughs> just yeah, yeah, just Literally, round. Like I mean, you feel amazing in the gym. I felt like I could do everything. Like yeah. anything. My sessions were strong, but then I'm looking at pictures of myself and like videos of myself. I'm like, yeah, but you didn't look like you resembled that training. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean, I was, I was like a really budget strong man. That's what I felt. Yeah, like. exactly. That's but I mean, awesome. what, what I should have done was just just said to to Gav to my coach you know can you help me with a reverse diet but yeah again I didn't quite know what to expect and I think I was still in shock that I'd done as well as I'd done yeah yeah, you oh, yeah you're on you're like, on a high right yeah and I was just literally like to be honest and then what then did sort of make my brain go um I read the feedback from the British finals and they wrote on there that I have the potential to turn pro wow that it says on there um he's not going to remain in the amateur ranks for very long so straight away in my head I was like right, okay, I need to go again. Next year, we need to go again. I need to turn pro because, you know, I look, I look at people like Gav, Rich Kazeki, Sam Watt, and all these guys, and I'm like, you're natural pros. I'm never going to be like you guys. And I'm like, well, then there's other pros, you know, like in different weight classes and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, I, I could actually do this. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, so come January, I like, I just, I mean, I've done a bit of damage control over Christmas. Yeah. And then come January, I was like, right, Let's get back into the to the ten week cut, the aggressive cut that I put myself on. Chip away, yeah. Um, and I have basically done the same thing again this year. Um, dieted myself down because then I had I had like my missus' birthday, then I had my birthday, and then was sure. like, right, this is the time to go into prep. Um, I actually went to see Gav on my birthday, yeah, to ask him to look over me, and um, and I caught him at a bad time because he was dieting himself. <laughs> and I think it was like his fifth straight low carb day or something. Uh -oh. and, um, he was like, how long is it until the show? I said, oh, it's about eight weeks. And he, he ripped into me, man. He oh, was man. like, if you want to be a pro, you need to be doing a 20-week prep. You can't be doing eight weeks. And what he was saying was right. Yeah. But, you know, I, I wanted to say, like, yeah, I know, but I have been dieting myself. But it's not the same as having him the whole time. Sure. And I, and I know that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, but, he but the, the thing is, Gav knows that I work. Like, I do everything he says. Yeah. Like, I don't want to upset that guy at all because, one, you just don't want to upset him. And, two, <laughs> he's my coach. I don't want to waste his time. No, exactly. No, that's you that's know? 100%. I agree. But like, I mean, it's, it's different when you've got, like, gen pop clients. You know, mm -hmm. not, not everyone sticks to what you get them to do. Yeah. You know, and I, I've come to accept that. That's fine. But if, you, if you're an athlete and if you want to take something serious – you know, you have to do everything by the book. I mean, yeah. Gav was, he had me eating chicken and oats like for some meals. So I just mixed it together and was like, yeah, this will do. And people yeah. are like, oh, that's disgusting. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, but I've got trophies on my, on my like, wardrobe that yeah. say that it works. Yeah, yeah. So what what's the issue? Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, I, I would just, I, I just literally follow everything he says. And I think this is, I, 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 he'll probably never say this. He's got a soft spot for me because he knows I work. Yeah. Day. He knows that I'll, I'll do what he says. So yeah, he took me on. Um, and then we started, we basically were going to do the same shows again. Sure. Um, and that was this year. So yeah, we've done Heart of England again. So I was a heavyweight. Okay. Um, and in my head, I was like, right, I want to come in. I want to win three overalls this year. I want a British title. I yeah. had all these plans. And then <laughs> I turned up against the heavyweights on the Heart of England and was like, oh my God, there was this <laughs> massive black dude, Solomon, who was just huge. 
there was another guy, Theo, and I was like, it's all right. I've got, because I knew I had condition. Yeah. So it was like, I might not be the biggest, but I've got, I've got good condition. Sure. Um, and then, yeah, we ended up doing that show. I've done that show and I come fourth and man, I was gutted. I yeah. Like my heart. That would have hurt. Out. Like it, it hurt and I was so disappointed in myself. I was like, I've let everyone down. Yeah. I've like, come second this year, but fourth this year. Yeah. Um, I've actually got a video. I'm I'm a bit inconsistent with YouTube, but I've got a YouTube video on there. It's called "The Broken Heart of England," where I talk about it. Okay. And um, Gav was just like, "Right, well, you know, back to the drawing board. You know, let's work." Yeah. Um, and I did. Next morning, I literally just got up, straight back on the stairs, and was like, "Right, let's get back to it." Nice. Um, but because at the time as well, while I was um, prepping, I transitioned, and that's when I moved to live with my missus. Okay. So I've moved here. Um, obviously left my business behind. I was working at a gym here, a bodybuilding gym, um, which was a sick gym. It was probably one of the best gyms I've ever been in. Like, the gym was sick. It had, it's got like a bad reputation, and like, but I didn't know about that. I'm not from the area, so I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, but it was cool because I used to work all the early shifts. I literally get up, I do my posing in the morning, go do my cardio, have a shower at the gym, then open it, and I was there. Perfect. Um, so I had, I was basically living the bodybuilding dream this year. Like yeah. everything was just bodybuilding and nothing else. Nice. Um, and yeah, and then I got ready for so I got ready for the um, MPA Southwest again. So yep. my show that I won last year. Yep. And turned up to that. Um, it was me and my friend James in the heavyweights, and there was there was some issues. He didn't pass his polygraph test. Mm. But it was it was for a, a, a sleep ingredient basically. It was like it was an ingredient in this sleep product that's not allowed to be used during competition time or something. And it, it's okay. not. I mean, the guy hasn't been smashing gear or nothing like that. Yeah. Um, so I was gutted, man, because I was just literally like, oh, come on, for real? Like, it's not like he's been juicing up and turned up, you know, ultra yeah. massive or anything. Yeah, yeah. So I was the only I was the only heavyweight, so I won by default. Yeah. And I was like, right, okay, I can just focus on the overall. Yeah. Um, and then I had the overall battle with a guy, Charlie, who's a middleweight, and he's got an awesome physique, like, real thick. Yeah. Um, but I had condition on him on the day. Like, my condition was the best it's ever been. That's like, awesome. I was looking back, I was I was like doing posing and my friend Dan was there taking pictures. I was like, man, I am dry, like I'm shredded from crack to crease. What, what <laughs> is this physique? Yeah. And um and yeah, and then they we had the overall and then they called me and him out separately. Oh shit. So your heart's and, just uh, we, had a little, we had a little pose down. And um and he won. <laughs> and I was literally like just <clears throat> Yeah, honestly, I, I, I nearly cried. I, I, I went, I'm not even gonna lie, I went backstage and I was just sat there and my friend Dan come out and come in and he's like, you're right. And I was like, mate, I want to cry. I was like, I don't, because like I said, I don't want to take anything away from him because he was wicked, man. But yeah. it, now I look back at it, it was like, you know, apples and oranges. Yeah. It was literally like one or the other. You're yeah. both high quality, but we're going for an orange today. Sure. But I was just like, how can I come better than last year? A little bit bigger. I think I was like 0. 0.2 bigger. Yep. Um, like condition. There was no one's condition that was tested, but like it was, it was heartbreaking, man. Yeah, no I doubt. remember it was literally like no judges gave me any proper feedback or anything, and I was like, what? And it was scrambling with my brain. And I was yeah, like, right, messes with you. Yeah, no, I, I text Gavin. I was just like, mate. I was like, didn't win the overall. I was like, I want to cry. I was like, I really do. He goes, don't worry. On to the next show. So I was like, right, okay. And then, so I had three weeks until the British finals. Whereas last week, uh, last year, they were all within a five week period. Okay. So it was like back to back, then a little break, then back to back. Right. This year, it was like the heart of England, then the Southwest, then the gap between the finals. And then the other finals was a week later. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, so I literally, I was like, I, I was feeling really sorry for myself. I was really down. I drove all the way home. You know, Mrs. opened the door for me. So she's like, you're right. And I was just like, no, I'm not. And I was I was just gutted, man, like, because because I wasn't taking it lightly. It was kind of like, I probably, in hindsight, I probably took it a bit too serious. Right. But that's because it was to me. Yeah. You know, like, when you're, you know, it's like, man, if you're nailing every single thing and and you bring something that's good enough and you don't get the reward for it, you're just like, well, what, 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 what yeah. do I do? Yeah, what, what, what could I have done differently? And you're like, yeah. and then you think and you're like, I don't think anything like I like you checked all <laughs> you check all the boxes and then you're still like god damn yeah li li literally and I think that was the hardest thing for me to accept was that look you've done nothing wrong you just weren't the guy on the day yeah and, and I think in my head it wasn't I wasn't ever like oh you know this is my show I'm gonna walk it and then even when I was through to the overall obviously by default I was like 
I didn't ever think to myself, yeah, I'm going to smash this. I was yeah. like, I was like, my attitude is there's no reason you can't win. Yeah. So go out there and do your thing. Nice. You know, it, it's never like, this is my show. I'm going to take it. It's my time. I hate all that. It's my time. Not because you yeah. don't know who's going to turn up. Yeah. Like, and, and you know, what's funny is, uh, I find, uh, it's that mindset is really huge with like natural athletes like ourselves. I find, uh, you know, just from, from talking to people locally, the guys that are enhanced, they, it's almost like because they sacrificed their health for it, yeah. they feel like they deserve, like I'm better than everybody else. Like I took all this stuff, I did all the work and it's like, and I remember the one guy, he, he competed and he came third and he right. was showing me photos and stuff and, and it was his first show, right? So he's just like, you know, just kind of like you said, like I deserve this, I earned this and all this stuff. And I looked at him, I said, if Phil Heath showed up, you'll never win. Yeah. Right. And it, and he kind of like looked at me and I'm like, I know you think you're God's gift to bodybuilding. I said, but remember <laughs> that I said, if Phil Heath was next to you on stage, you're not shit. Right. And he just yeah. kind of like, kind of like nodded in understanding, but it's true. Like at the end of the day, like, I mean, as, as, as proud of I am with what I've accomplished, like I know that if Ben Howard and me were lightweights together on stage, I might as well turn around and go home. That's just the reality of it, right? Not yeah, saying yeah. that I, that that could always not be the case. Like, you know, this is a long game, but yeah, yeah. where I'm at right now, that's the truth, right? Like, that's just the way it is, right? Same with you, right? Like, there's, you know, I'm sure if you and your coach stood next to each other on stage, it might be a very different story. <laughs> well, this is why when I'm when I'm considering, obviously, right, I'm a middleweight slash heavyweight. I'm like, okay, well, let me look at the heavyweight natural pro. So you've got. Sam Watt, you've got Adrian Gray, Gav Gibson, obviously my coach, and then Rich Gazeki. I look at them guys, and I'm like, wow, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm so far away from that. Yeah, like, and it's humbling. I, I, it really is. Like, like if you look at it from like a, a positive light, like, it, like you can't help but respect everything they've done. And like, and like for me, it's like looking at these guys and be like, okay, like this is what is possible, right? Yeah, like, I'm yes. never, I'm a lightweight on stage. I might get up to like light or like middleweight or whatever the next class is up one day, I'm never going to be a heavyweight, right? That's just the yeah. reality of it. Like, like naturally it's just not going to happen. Right. So for me, it's like, okay, what's the best that I can become? Right. Yes. Which and I is, think that's the thing with, with me and Gav, what we've noticed because he was, we were speaking this year and obviously we, we cut to, to get to middleweight and um, at the British finals, I was 79.9. Yeah. It's literally 0. 0.1 <laughs> away from the cutoff. And you know, for me, like, I won't lie, I did struggle a bit. It, it was hard. Like, I felt, because this year I definitely felt bigger. Yeah. You know, because my, my training, I'd noticed last year, because I was training at Gavs every day, I was training differently. Yeah. One thing that I've become known for is my hamstrings. Like, my hamstrings, I'm not going to toot my own heart, but my hamstrings look pretty nuts on stage. Like, they, yeah. when I was at the Southwest, I hit a, um, a back double by, and then um, the, the guy said about popping hamstrings, and I went, and literally I heard people go, oh. Yeah, like see, that. that's so cool, right? And, and, and I felt it, and, and literally, I was like, oh, my God. And I was like, <laughs> You're like, I pulled something, I'm down. <laughs> L literally, and then I went backstage, and, and, and Dad was like, man, he goes, your hamstrings look insane. I was like, yeah, I hope they do, because I think I've just tore it. <laughs> and it was actually sore. Like, I got on the stairs the next day, and I was, I was stepping, and my, my, my hands were like, really, really? But I'd never really, you know, like, done this type of training that I did before. So quickly, I mean, quickly, if you don't mind, touch on that real quick. Like what's, what was the difference in, in training? Um, it was, it was, it was just heavier. It was heavier. It was, it was, I'm always writing on Instagram, heavy rep, like just heavyweight, loads of reps. Yeah. You know, like, like Gav, Gav was, is an advocate of, you know, going for like 12 to 15, but as heavy as you can. Okay. And I mean, I used to say this beforehand, you know, if you can do a weight for 12, but you can go heavier and you can still do it for like, put, you want that, because people always say to me, you know, should I do high reps, low reps, or, you know, the standard questions. And I'm always like, aim for like a 12 rep range, but get as heavy as you can with that. Yeah. You know, so instead of coming in and, and warming up with 60, so I'll just use bench as an example, warming up with 60 on the bench. Yeah. And then doing, say, 80 for 12. Why don't you try warming up with like 70 and try and get 90 for 12 reps? Yeah. You know, and then I, I started, especially the hamstrings, I started doing sets of 20, like heavy sets of 20. So there was... You know, there was times I was like three weeks out for a show and I was doing, I was doing 130 kilos for 20 reps. Yeah. You know, and like uh, 120, sorry, for 20 reps and like really just 
wanting to be another level. It's almost like, right, I've only got three weeks to build as much muscle as I can. Yeah. You know it can happen. Yeah. But, I but it's here, to... right? If you train yes. like it's going to happen, like that's the difference, right? Like, like for yes. me right now, like today, for example, today was hammies and glutes. And yeah. uh, I've, I've, ne- I've always been impressed with guys that can hip thrust a lot. Yeah. I just think it's, <laughs> I just think it's like insane. Like it's so like, you know, you see guys doing 7, 800 pound hip thrusts. And I'm like, holy shit. Like that's insane. <laughs> and I've never been one to train that movement. And the beginning of this year, 2018, um, my back was messed. Like I, I was probably like January to July, like physio, Cairo, like I could train around it, but I couldn't really squat, couldn't really deadlift. Like obviously hip thrust was out. So, yeah. but just probably the last eight weeks, it's been like mint. And today I hip thrust 500 for five. And I was like, damn, Wait, like these glutes on stage are going to be mint. Yeah, but it's like, like, I agree. Like, I think like that heavy shit, man, like, and especially on big movements, like, like I'll do like heavy sets of three on bench just cause I feel like a beast doing it. And I'll do like some yeah. accessory stuff. Like I'll do like that 12 reps, but again, it's like 12 is 12. 12 is not, I could do 15. Like 12 is 12. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think as well, like, you know, what, what, what a lot of people, cause obviously I've learned from, I love Johnny Jackson. I love Brian Warren and I love the way that those guys train because yeah. it's, it's, it's nuts to watch. But yeah. I mean, they might not be the most successful bodybuilders. Obviously Brian Warren's very successful. Um, but they're all thick and dense. Yeah. There's muscle that's like that's muscle. Made, yeah, because they will go to failure with that heavy weight. They're not afraid to go there. Yeah, and obviously, there's you don't want to be reckless. Um, and there's, I mean, there's times when I worked up to like 100 because I can't deadlift. Whenever I deadlift, my hips just go mess because I've got the worst mobility ever. Like <laughs> my body is a mess. My my sports therapist, Shah, she, I remember the first time I saw her, she was like, I was shredded at the time. It was before show. She was like, I can get to everything because you're so lean. So you're a mess. I'm like, I yeah. realize that. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, but so I, I so I did deadlift pretty much. I, I'll, I'll try it every now and then. I'm like, right, let's go. We're just going to do it. And then I'll be messed up for days. Yeah, and you're like, like ah, yeah, bad yeah. idea. So, but yeah, stiff legs became like a staple. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and like you say, just being, you know, I remember I was doing a set of 20 and someone said to me, he's like, why are you doing so many reps? I'm like, well, why not? I can. You know, it's like if I can if I can do it for twenty, why am I going to do it for ten and then stop? Yeah, that don't make no sense to me. Yeah, um, and it's just keeping that muscle under as heavy tension as you can. That's how I like to do things. Yeah, you know, um, obviously there's there's time and a place for your five by fives and you know your triples, your doubles and stuff like that. Yeah. But generally, I just like to just to go heavy, he- heavy, heavy and reppy. That's that's my that's, that's my thing, my favorite thing. Yeah. Well, and it's so, a, and like you look at a lot of like successful bodybuilders, right? Like, I mean go back to like, you know, the golden era, whatever you want to call it. Like, like yeah. Franco and Arnold, like all those old photos, like, like they got four plates on their back for a squat and they've got mm-hmm. 315 on the bar for bench. Like they're not met, like Arnold's like, there's old pictures of him doing flies with like 65 pound dumbbells. Like, <laughs> I don't know how his shoulder didn't just blow up, but I mean, you look at that and then you look at what they built. Like you can't deny that like drugs ignored. You still can't deny like, the work, the, the work yeah. ethic in the gym, the, the guts, like you said, Branch Warren, like not afraid to go to failure with a couple hundred pounds on your back. Like a lot of shit can That's go wrong, but then at the end of the day, it's like, I want legs. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think there's, there's, like I say, there's that, that careful balance of it's chaos, but it's controlled chaos. Yeah, you know, like, exactly. You know, I'm never going to overload myself with something. I know that's going to kill me, but at the same time in my head, and this is why I'm glad my training changed when I was like, am I most vulnerable? Because when I was leading up to my shows, it's when my training was actually getting more intense. Yeah. So like on the, um, on the single arm hammer strength plate loaded, bro, that's one of my favorite back machines, you know, I was three weeks out and I still had four plates on there and we're getting 12 to 15 out. So then in my head, I'm like, right. Okay. So when it comes to off season, you better be warming up with this. Well, yeah. And, it's, and, it's, and, and that enables me to gauge it differently. I actually did a post. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that like in prep, like I did a post and a video, I think it was like last week, but it was like, don't get weak on prep, right? A lot of people use prep, I find, as an excuse to like dial it back in the gym. It's like they kind of worry more about their cardio than like the training. They're like, I just got to get the weight off, just got to get the weight off. And it's like, man, like you're probably sacrificing muscle on the way down. It's like what built your physique yep. is going to keep it, right? So like that, I'm – I'm, I'm 10 weeks into prep and I'm PRing on hip thrusts. Like never, ever, ever have I touched that weight. Like last week I, I put 400 on to play around with it. And this week I'm doing five, right? Like 
But again, just, it's, that, it's that mindset of wanting to... Because I think for some people, and again, it's not to criticise anyone. Yeah. Because, you know, some people, I mean, some people get halfway through the process and think, oh, I don't want to do this. There's some people that, I know some guys that compete every year. They don't really place in shows, but they just like doing it. That's yeah. cool. Like, yeah, that's there's, fine. There's, there's, yeah. there's space for everyone. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, what one thing, like you said, it's that, it's that line. What builds the muscle keeps the muscle. And, and in my head, I'm like, there's no reason why I can't build more leading up to my shows. Yeah. You know, because yeah. then in my head, like I say, because then you use that as a, as a comparison to yourself. Right, well, I was still doing 120 kilo stiff leg deadlifts when I was three weeks out and vulnerable and, and feeling like a skeleton yeah. and dying. Yeah. So now I'm fueled off every bowl of oats I can find yeah. in my house. Yeah. Cereal and God knows what. I better be doing more. Yeah. You know, but but like you say, it's 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 almost like you just like I, I mean I'm really harsh, but I don't want to take it easy on myself. No. And if I'm in a hard process, you don't want to make it easier. No. You know, because and it's funny when people say, "Oh, you know, the the, the end part of my prep was easy because we were cruising in." It's still not easy. It's no, still no. tough. Yeah, you know? yeah, you're still and working. Then, it's like, yeah, it's I don't know. And again, it's it's you know what we said you know a little while ago is like comparing explaining it to people that haven't done it. It's mm -hmm. you know, and and a lot of the time, like you can have an off day in the gym, and everybody's like, "This guy goes right," but to you, <laughs> you're like, you're like, man, like that was okay. And you're yeah. still like lifting, right? But and, and and you know, like people, it's different, right? Like it's a yeah. different animal altogether. It's it's, yeah, I and love that, it. I literally, again, that's what I love because you got people that will look at us that will feel that, but then I look at that we then look at the level yeah. above us. Yeah, you know, like I'll look at I'll look at like I say, Gab or, or Rich, uh, Rich Gazeki. I, I don't know if you've ever seen Rich Gazeki. I think he's the full time world champion. He's like one of the main USN guys. Right. Um, he's an absolute legend. But he put a thing up the other day. He's working away, so he's at some pure gym, like, you know, like a cheap um, franchise brand. I train in a pure gym. It's all right, to be fair. Um, <laughs> but he was doing, like, 100 reps of squats with, um, I think it was 180. And it was, like, a set of 20. And then it was, like, a set of 17. And, then, and it was just, like, it's madness. And, <laughs> and we're all shocked by it. But some people were literally, like, like, like he's just invented fire. It's like, well, like, have you seen the guy's legs? This is why he's got them legs. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's not afraid to go there and he's making it work. And it's, no, no that's not, you, you're not going to learn that in any textbooks or anything. You should yeah. get in there and do work. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what I think is funny. I, I don't, like, I've, I've just started from last week actually writing my own sessions down. You know, I've always programmed stuff for clients, but for me, I don't. I'm like, I've done this long enough. It's all in my head. Yeah. Um, but now I'm actually logging it down and I'm writing down what I do. I look, I'm like, wow, you do a lot in one session. Yeah. You know, but it's allowed. So like, you know, this morning I had my tea bar rows and I was preparing into what I'd done last week. And I'm actually glad now because yeah, my sessions are like controlled chaos and, yeah. uh, and all people that are training me turn up and they're like, we just know we're going to do some kind of volume, whether it's, if it's light, it's going to be, we're talking 50 to a hundred reps, like in side raises. Yeah. But if it's heavy, we're still getting like 12 to 15. Yeah. No, it's so it's it's that's yeah. just, that's just the it's way how you attack it. it, right? It's it's all in how you yep. and and you know like you, like you said, it, there's that line where it's like you've got people that love to compete, so they're going to compete. Yep. They might never place, but they love it, right? Mm -hmm. Then you've got people that you know they take that time off and and they train hard, blah blah, and that's cool. Then there's like you know kind of where it sounds like me and you are at. It's like okay, I want a world title one day, whether yep. I'm 26, whether I'm 36, whether I'm 46, I want it, and I'm going to do what it takes to do that, right? If it's yep. cardio every day for an hour and then it's weights for that hard 12 every single damn set, if it's weighing out my broccoli, because I like, you're going to do it, right? You're, and it was, yeah, I, yeah. I did this uh, podcast with Jack Piad yesterday. I don't know if you follow him. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, we got talking about like monitoring like little shit, like, like optimizing sleep and recovery. And, you know, like I'm, I'm big into like on rest days, I don't do shit. Right, like I'll yeah. I do my clients and stuff, but like when I'm home on my break and like so Thursdays and Sundays I don't train unless yeah. I have to do cardio and like Sundays like you're hard pressed to get me to do anything like <laughs> like you know strenuous right like girlfriend yes. wants to go to the mall okay I'll go to the mall walk around the mall but if it's like if it's anything like work related like no nah, because I got to get ready yeah. for for back on Monday and you best believe like some heavy pull-ups are going down some heavy rows yeah. are going down like you know what i mean but i gotta be i'll be ready for that like i need my body to be yeah. at 100 as best i can and i think that's that's one thing that i do i do lack and i know that is is recovery 
You know, I mean, I, I kept telling myself when I was in prep, I was like, right, I'm going to go into a split where I do three days, have one off. Yep. Two days, have one off. Yeah, that, that's um, actually so, exactly what I do. Yeah, so in my head, I was like, yes, I'm going to do that. And then I don't, I mean, at first I thought it was just because I was worried about getting too fluffy and, you know, just keep training, keep training and, and yeah. damage control. But I actually, I, I enjoy my time in the gym. I know I need to take more time to recover, yeah. but I, I enjoy my time. So I've dropped down from doing two leg days now. I'm only doing one leg day, right. which for me is a big deal because yeah. instead I'm putting in arms. I need arms. And even if I'm ill, dying with the flu, yeah. you can always do You arms. can always get, that's so true. <laughs> always do I need to write that arms. down. <laughs> <laughs> so like Saturday, um, I, w- I, w- I woke up because I worked Friday night, and I woke up on Saturday morning, and um, yeah, me and my missus were in bed. She had to go and sort out some stuff with her tires, and I was just literally like, I don't even want to train. Like I feel, yeah, I know, I know, I need to sleep more. But then I was like, but it's arm day, and you want to do that 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 set with the triceps, and you want you, and and I just got up and just almost floated to, to my little cupboard. <laughs> Got my pre workout yeah. out, you, drank that, had my oats, and was like, "Yeah, I'm ready to go." Yeah. You know? But I probably should have taken the time to recover. But with me, I always seem to be working an unsociable job. So, like PT, it's obviously like you know, rest during the day, and then you're you're, you're back in the evening for clients. Yeah. At the moment, I'm on shift, so tonight I'm starting just after ten, uh, ten o'clock tonight, and I'm going to be done about five six probably yeah and then it's like right do i come in from work and go straight to the gym no i have a few hours sleep yeah and then i wake up like oh, i could really just sleep for a couple more hours but i'm like no get up go to the gym yeah three two one so, out yeah literally so recovery is something but i'm the same as you rest day i try to do the minimal you know like you said we might go out shopping or go pick something up but i i like to just try and relax i mean earlier when i was sleeping I, every day i sleep with my feet up now you know like on show day yeah yeah because uh, where i'm stood on my feet for so long and my legs are just like balls of lead right uh, so i'll sleep with my feet up so i'm trying to yeah optimize little my things recovery a bit more but yeah but i'm yeah that's that but again that's just me being me like yeah I, I I don't get my massages every week anymore yeah and there's so much that i but i do my own rehab at home so i do i am trying baby but, steps man baby steps <laughs> Yeah, but and I'll have like a really good week where I'll smash my rehab. I'll do everything like to look after myself, and then I'll have a week where I'll just go totally out the pan. But <laughs> I don't care. I don't actually, and that's I think that's the problem. I don't care. I'm like, oh. Well, I, I think I honestly that. think what what did it for me was being hurt at the beginning of the year, right? Like I think yeah. I saw like you know physique wise, I don't think it did much because I would really like for legs, for example, if I couldn't squat and stuff, you best believe I was hitting lunges leg extensions, yep. like everything I could do to like kill my yes. legs if I'm not squatting and deadlifting. So for me, it was like, okay, I don't ever want that to happen again, right? And and the proof is in the pudding, right? Doing those hip thrusts and, and deadlifts and stuff like that. Now, like it's it's got to be correlated with how much I'm trying to recover properly and mobility and stretching. And, you know, I would like to do massages like maybe once every like eight weeks kind of deal. Like I don't need one every week, yeah. but just that preventative maintenance, especially in prep now, just to keep everything running on all cylinders. But no, yeah, it's it's everybody's it's different, a, right? and, and that's the thing, man. And that's where, like, I'm glad that I can squat now. Because my hips still give me a bit of grief, but I deadlifted last week for the first time in ages. And I was yep. like, right, because I'm a, I'm a solutions guy. If there's ever a problem, so for example, if it's after a show and I've eaten a bit too much food, I'm like, right, how can I help my digestion? Okay, apple cider vinegar. I've heard gingers because so I will try any solution. Yeah. And like one of my closest friends, Brian, he's like, what? Well, he's not my big brother, really. He said to me, he was like, look, just chill, just, just, just accept it. Like, yeah. stop trying to fix everything. Um. So last week I was, I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about deadlifts all week, and I was like, <laughs> I stopped. And I was like, what if I use my squat shoes? I was like, let me, let me try that. Because I had such a good leg session on the Wednesday, but obviously, because I'm not doing my hammies and glutes session separately, I'm doing it all together, I right. didn't do stiff legs, and obviously, that's my exercise. So I was like, it's all right, you do deadlifts instead. So I use my squat shoes, um, and I'll tell you what, I mean, I only got, I got five by five of 140, which I think my, my deadlift max is 240. Like, I've lifted some big deads in the past. Yep. Um, that's also why I use the excuse that I don't deadlift no more, because I've done that. <laughs> I'm done, done yeah. Time. Enough of that. Yeah, I've done that. But, you know, I just took my time with everything. Um, used my squat shoes and it was the most comfortable I've ever felt. Perfect. You know, and, and it was wicked. And I was like, right, so this week I'm already excited. I'll put it on my um, second uh, pool day because, again, nice. this whole push pull legs thing is new to me because I've been Monday will be legs. It's usually legs, chest, back, shoulders, legs, arms. Gotcha. That has been my routine, like the, the bro split. That's, that's yeah. my thing. Like, I, I don't, I've never done this push pull. So 
And I try, this is nothing with social media, I try not to do it just because I've seen it on there. Yeah, yeah. And, and I've had quite a lot of clients, like, and people just chat to me about it, and they're like, oh, I've seen this guy, you know, he does push ball legs, why don't you do that? I'm like, well, because I haven't needed to. Yeah. You know, the only reason I'm doing it now is because I've got more time to train, and I want to do more exercises. You yeah, know, that, like, yeah. I mean, you can get more volume I'm, in if you do body part, right? Yes, exactly. So, um, so my first press session is all press focused, and my second press session is laterals and flies. Because gotcha. I want to, I want to get my press strength back up, and my shoulder. I can't press above my head. Um, it's just I get scared. I have confidence issues, and I'm weak. I'm not good at pressing above my head. So yeah, I'm, it makes I'm two of us. Prioritize that on a Monday. Yeah, and then on, and then for my side raises and all my. Um, lateral work I do that on a Thursday because yep. as well that's when I come off two night, two consecutive night shifts where it's like if I'm feeling a bit dead it doesn't matter you've, you've pushed everything heavy already so yeah, yeah. yeah you're good um, but again just because you see people doing it online you shouldn't have to do that yeah no it's, you know? it's funny you mentioned the whole social media aspect because I agree like everybody's like bent out of shape about body part splits <laughs> because like whatever whatever but let's all be honest we all did that when we were 16 we exactly. hammered chest, we hammered back, we did buys and tries, maybe legs, yeah. maybe <laughs> legs, and then and then it got into like, you know, push-pull legs, maybe upper-lower is the new thing, but like, yeah. at the end of the day, if it works for you, like, look at your body, right? Who's yeah. going to argue like, body part split, like, doesn't work when you can see your physique, you know what I mean? Like, I, th- I think people, people, people get married, it's like, it's like religion. Right, yeah. like your your bot your your training split is your religion, and if everything else yep. is wrong, and it's like that's not a good way to look at it. It's not. I know, and and for me, I, I've got like I'm just I'm a creature of habit, man. So even you know like when I was first like right, I'm gonna go into this push pull thing. I was just like I woke up and was like right, cool. So I'm gonna do push today, and then I was like, well, well, what, what do I do in a push session? <laughs> and it was literally it was a chest session with some overhead with some of these. <laughs> Yeah, literally, and I was just like, right, okay, so when I sat down and thought about it, I was just like, right, okay, because I, I, I know I'm at that stage where I do need to change, something needs to change, I need to lift a bit different, Yeah. but but that's me assessing me, I know my legs aren't a weak body part, I'm, I, I need to let them recover, I'm stood on them when I'm working constantly, so you only need to do one session, Yeah. you know, So, but that's what works for me, Yeah. You know? but it's the same with diet as well, it's the same with food, I mean... One of my clients sent me a picture of he bought some cream of rice um, just because he's seen everyone on Instagram eating it. And he hates you know? it. He hates it. And, and, I, and I was just like, he goes, oh, you know, I'm struggling to make it. I'm like, well, mate, why don't, why, well, one, you could have just got, because I get ground rice. Okay. Um, it's not flavored anything. It's like 90p a box. So I'm like, well, I'll just have that. But again, because he's seen it on social media, he feels like he needs to do it. But I just said to him, no, no like, we're working on you. We're working for you. Like, yeah. I said, let me know how you digest it and if um, it's well, and it, he's going to send me the bag because he doesn't want it. So I was like, yeah, I'll take it. I'll yeah, take it right now. So. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's awesome. Well, dude, we're like, I think we're like an hour in. That's awesome. Wow, man. Yeah, this wow. has been, I'm just looking at the clock now. It's a little after 12. So we've uh, we've got uh, a good conversation here. Yeah, man, I've loved this. So what I want you to do is, is uh, answer a couple questions, just some random kind of one shots yep. to finish. To wrap her all up, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, set up the next date for sure. Yeah, man, perfect. Sounds good, man. Okay, so give me a uh, favorite body part to train. Ooh, back or legs. Okay, back it's or legs. Be, it's got to be back or legs. So give me your your top two exercises for both muscle groups. What are you gonna always majority of the time uh, do? T bar rows for back okay. always. Um, I want I, I want to lie and say pull ups, but I've only just started doing them again. Um, T bar rows and dumbbell rows, always. Nice. I'll always do those. Yep. And hamstrings, stiff leg deadlifts, without doubt. Um, and lying hamstring curls, love how lying hamstring curls. Nice, nice. Uh, PRs on squat, bench, deadlift. Bench was uh, one seventy. Squat was two. I think it was 215, I never quite got the 220, and deadlift was 245. Nice. Oh, no, two, 240 or 245, because I tried 250 and thought I walked my spine. <laughs> and just for people that are listening, that's kilos, not pounds. Yeah, yeah, it's kilos, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big difference there. Um, favorite uh, going out meal, if you're going to go out with some friends, what are you like, okay, guys, let's go do this, you know, there's no restrictions, burgers. no rules. Burgers, man. I'm a, I'm a big burger guy. What's on um, your burger? I love burgers um 
TGI Fridays, we went to, me and Marissa went for date night on the weekend, and I got the gravy seal. It's got popcorn, shrimp, chicken, cheese, bacon, beef. Comes with a pot of gravy, a bit of barbecue sauce with it. I throw some chips in there. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm a big burger guy, man. I love a good burger. Well, who doesn't? Who doesn't? Um, <laughs> so give me your, like, top two long-term goals in bodybuilding. Natural pro. I, I want to I wanna win a pro card. That yep. is 100% one of my goals. Um, like you say, don't know when it's going to be, but that is it. That is definitely the goal. Um, oh, I'm not actually sure, to be fair. That's that it, is, right? That's that, like that's that's point. that's the be all end all, right? Just that, yeah. Just that that one day, that one day. And uh, do you know what? I think as well, actually, if I'm going to be honest, so I want to wear a pro card. That is the ultimate goal. But I want to be able to be 100 kilos shredded. I don't know if that will ever happen. Yeah. I don't know if it's genetically possible, but I would love to be 100 kilos shredded. I've always had that in my head. That's intense. I know, that's <laughs> and I've seen someone that is 100 kilos shredded. I'm like. I've got a long, long way to go. <laughs> nice. Um, looking objectively at your physique, what's the one area that needs improvement? Uh, upper body, shoulders, arms. That this whole sort of area right. needs. To, it's not bad, but it needs to be built up. Gotcha. Um, especially when my legs are so dominant. Yeah. That that needs to match it. You know, if I hit a side chest with someone, I've got good conditioning and everything lines up nicely. But I've got pebbles, and you've got someone with a big ass shoulder next yeah. to me. So makes a difference. It, yeah, big difference. And last one, what is your one or two pieces of advice for the young bodybuilder coming up in the ranks? Maybe he's getting ready for his first show. What do you got for him? Um, stay in your lane. Love like, it. That's I. It's so true. Worry honestly, about you. Like focus. Whatever is in your lane, stay in it. Like if you've got a coach, listen to your coach. If you're on social media, try not to get caught up in in trying to do what what this guy says and that guy says, because you'll just be bombarded. Like, yeah. make your plan and just stick with it. And if it doesn't work, then oh well, try yeah. again next time. But yeah. it's really just focus on you because it can. this game can become so overwhelming. Man. Yeah, that's awesome. Anything else? Any, any little tidbits you can share? Don't be afraid to go there, man. Don't be afraid. Yeah, like, just do like it. We're talking about. Just do like, it. Train, train like you mean. When, if you want to be an athlete and you want to be on stage, you want to win shows, you want to bring home no trophies and medals, then train like you mean it. Yeah. You know, don't just go in there and go through the motions to try and get it done. Like, I, I thrive off when, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a training session, I'm so depleted, I'm dying. I'm like, I don't know when my next high carb day is coming. Yeah. You know, because Gavin sort of just tell me on the day based yeah. on how I look. So, and I feel rotten and I'm like, no, but this is good. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna win today. Yeah. I'm gonna have a better session, and I've had some of my best sessions while I've been in my most zombies. So yeah. you know, go in there and want it. Like that's that's what you got to do, man. But want it for you. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like we said, don't do it for likes. Don't try and impress people on Instagram because you you'll impress them for all the two seconds when they've liked it. Then they scroll. Yeah, down then they're gone. Someone's butt on there, and then it's gone. <laughs> you know. So whereas true. if you're sat at home, like I sit here sometimes, I look at my trophies and I'm like, yeah, I did that. Yeah. I know everything that went into that. I did that. Yeah. You know, no one else cares. It doesn't matter when you're the only one looking at it. That's awesome. Solid, solid finishing, finishing sentence. That's good. Yes, I like that. All, all right, man. Uh, quickly <laughs> plug your Instagram. I'll write it up on screen. But where can people find you? Yeah, so on Instagram, um, at Train with Mitchell. Yep. Um, search me on there. I'm I'm on there every day, always posting stuff on the story. Um, I've started doing polls on on food posts, which actually get more engagement than my training stuff. Man. Yeah, people <laughs> love quite, food, man. People love food. Love food, but um, yeah. On, um, so there, I've got a Facebook page as well, but and a YouTube channel, which okay. is youtubecom slash Train with Mitchell. Okay. Um, I've got some training sessions on there. Um, I've got last year's prep peak weeks are all on there. Okay, and cool, stuff. cool. Um. I'm just, I, yeah, I always, I'm like, right, I'm going to start YouTubing again. And then I just never end up conti like being yeah. consistent with it. But yeah. mainly, yeah, Instagram's where you can catch me. So everything's pretty much trained with Mitchell. Awesome, awesome. All right, people, you heard it all there. Give him a follow, give him a like, and uh, keep up to date with the man. He's got he's got big things coming. I can I can tell already. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching uh, and listening to the Bodybuilding Banter Podcast. Thank you, my man, for coming on. And uh, we'll have to do this again soon. 100%, man, 100%. Thanks for having me. All right, enjoy the rest of your day, buddy. Yes, you too, man. Take it easy. Bye.